I know I'm normally a Final Fantasy XIV channel, but I want to break out a bit more, and this one... This one matters quite a bit to me. So I've been playing Pikmin for a very, very long time. Amazingly, Pikmin is over 20 years old at this point, all the way back on the GameCube. Hard to imagine, but the GameCube really is that old. The point is, I've been a fan of this series since even back then, despite never beating it as a kid. The 30-day limit alone was enough to scare me out of trying as a kid. I played a bit, enjoyed what I played, but I don't think I ever made it past the Forest of Hope. Then for Pikmin 2, I spent 300 days going back and forth between areas before becoming brave enough to fight the fiery bull blacks hiding the yellow Pikmin. I, uh, was a very dumb kid sometimes. Still am, really. I did beat Pikmin 2 at least, and went back on Wii Play Control Pikmin 1 and beat it then. But I think it says a lot about the magic of Pikmin and how special this series can be that games I was that bad at still enchanted me. And why I beg you, implore you, you need to try out this demo too. If you are a Switch owner, you owe it to yourself to see what kind of series Pikmin is, with a couple of caveats unique to Pikmin 4. To quickly explain what Pikmin is about for those uninitiated, it's a bit of a real-time strategy adventure game. You crash land on a post-apocalyptic Earth and build a small army of cute little dudes to grab objects in the world to achieve your goal, which slightly differs per game. The real joy of Pikmin is in the exploration and multitasking elements. Not all the games have a finite time limit, and Pikmin 4 is among those. You have infinite time to complete the game, but each foray into the world only gives you about 15 minutes depending on the game. This pushes you to look for how to best split your attention between all your possible different goals day to day. Even within this demo, you have access to nearly an entire area, with a ton of different options for how to reach your limited demo goal. I completed about half the first area within the demo, and with better multitasking and control usage, I could have done even more. Or had I differently planned out things, maybe just delayed the demo's end to the next day. I could have completed far more. And I want to play more. I want more. I will probably end up taking time to replay Pikmin 3 or something soon. I want my Pikmin fix, and we still have three weeks until the full game release. Pikmin games always start out pretty basic, but even then there's a ton of options here in this demo. Several caves I passed up but were easily accessible, a boss fight I missed out on, so much else to explore, and a huge amount of stuff that could be overwhelming for a new player. Pikmin 4 brings in a lot of new systems. First, we have Ochi, who is a good boy and is very much the correct decision to add into the game. He works as several systems at once. He has a jump button, a charge, is a secondary captain for exploring environments, and has an upgrade system. Yes, an upgrade system. There's actually two upgrade systems, and that second system also is a gear system, and a resource system for progressing through areas and building bridges, and then you also have items and... Yeah, it's a lot. It seems like a lot of added fluff for the sake of it, rather than an actual reason to add it. Like, locking away basic features kind of fluff. The main reason I say this is in Pikmin 3, they added the Go Here function. With three captains to control at the mid-game, moving them all around the map manually would just feel terrible. Especially with how expansive maps got. Being able to just pick a captain, pick a location, and having them automatically walk to it left you a ton of ability to do things with your other captains. Such an important base feature of Pikmin 3. However, going into Day 3 of Pikmin 4, you unlock Ochi Training Sessions. One of these trainings is the Go Here function. You have to actively buy this upgrade. It costs 3 points, and points aren't extremely quick to gain since it's based on people you rescue, it seems. Sure, that's just basic progression, but it is kinda hard to go back to Pikmin 2 after playing Pikmin 3. Splitting up your two captains in Pikmin 2 is completely manual movement. Even if maps are far smaller than in Pikmin 3, the habit is super hard to break just because of how convenient it is. The first map is pretty huge in Pikmin 4, a lot of empty space too, but makes sense given the going for this being like a real garden in the real world as such. So I'm not going to criticize any emptiness, it's also the first map so they're going easy on you, but I am going to criticize that they took away such an important feature. If I didn't tell you what Go Here was, would you know? Would you realize how huge of a benefit this is? That you could automatically move your captains around with this? 
The Switch has made basically every series on it sell way more copies than any previous game has. Pikmin will be the same. So a lot of new faces not knowing that Go Here is automating movement. A quick fix for anyone who knows what it is, but a huge detriment to any players who don't. Or any players who don't check what every Ochi upgrade is to see Go Here is one of them. And maybe saving civilians will also be locking other features, since one of them is how you access the treasure catalog. So the same normal progression from Pikmin 2 might still be there, but with other progressions too. On the topic of major changes, one of the major things I noticed is how caves are going to massively shake up how planning out efficient routes will go. In all the other Pikmin games, the only way to change your party makeup was to go back to your base camp and mess with the onions. There was only one base camp rather than the multiple here in Pikmin 4, which will be its own can of worms, but that's besides the point. In Pikmin 2, completing a cave, even across the map, would always end with your group being launched back to base camp. So moving on to the next cave, assuming your plan is to go right to the next cave, you're in position to change up your squad before heading out, but you still needed to get back to this spot if you wanted to change it up. Maybe you wanted to go after a specific overworld treasure and didn't have the Pikmin for it. Here in Pikmin 4, you can pick your squad independently of what Pikmin are currently out. This isn't just at the Onion, this is upon entering and exiting a cave. So you can go do some overworld tasks, end up with 30 Pikmin sitting back at base far away from your next cave goal, and just go into the cave to not just pick up your team instantly, but change which Pikmin you have. This is kind of insane to me. Taking a risk of only bringing, say, 30 yellow Pikmin is a very calculated risk. If you find a big treasure on a cliff that needed 40, well, you need to go get 10 more yellow Pikmin. But your squad is only 100 big at max. So if you want to, say, bring 40 yellows for height, 40 blues for water, and the rest red for combat, well, that leaves only 20 combat Pikmin. Which red has historically been one of the better fighters, by the way. I feel like this is a double-edged sword caused by some of the other things Pikmin 4 is doing. Pikmin 1 only had three Pikmin, red, blue, and yellow. Pikmin 2 had purple and white Pikmin, which were unique to that game before Pikmin 4 brought them back. Pikmin 3 had rock and pink flying Pikmin instead. So three, five, and then five types of Pikmin per game. Pikmin 4 has red, blue, yellow, white, purple, rock, pink, ice, ghost, and maybe more. That is at least nine types of Pikmin. They might even bring back the cave exclusive Bulbmin for a technical tenth. That's a lot of Pikmin. So having to make a squad of only 10 to 15 each? Impossible. You lock yourself out of a lot of things since some tasks, even in this first area of Pikmin 4, needs 30 Pikmin of a single type. This double-edged sword gets longer with the additional change that you are only allowed three types of Pikmin out on the field at a time. This ruins the kind of cool easter eggs like Pikmin 2's I Know Uta for having 20 of each Pikmin out at once. But when it comes to normal gameplay, yeah, this makes sense. This limit somehow brings in far more freedom to the player in a game where there's potentially too many choices. If I know for sure I need 30 ice Pikmin, 30 yellows to grab a treasure above a lake those ice Pikmin freeze, and I want a healthy combat group of reds, well, there's my 100 Pikmin makeup. Then when that task is done, I enter the nearby cave I've not done, change my team just for that task, then change it again when I leave for whatever next task the overworld has. This adds an insane level of planning for a first playthrough, and a just stupid high amount of planning for replays. Now you know what tasks you have per area, exploration and discovery is out of the picture, but the arcadey element of getting a best time, a new best day count, and lowering your Pikmin death count comes right in. What took me 20 game days blind might take me only 15 the next playthrough, or even 10. Pikmin 1 has been reduced to a mere 6 day run where the limit is 30. So individually these could be awful annoying constraints, but together with how caves function in this game, this changes everything. This literally changes everything. This game is going to shift the planning and multitasking elements into overdrive, entirely on the back of how caves work. And I am completely here for it. In that previous section, I constantly mentioned a 100 Pikmin cap, and the footage you are viewing never shows this. 
Usually a Pikmin cap is 100, but here in Pikmin 4, it's only 20 until you get onion expansions. Each one will increase your Pikmin cap by 10. It makes me wonder if the cap will still be 100, or if by the end game you can have an even bigger army. 150? 200? Who knows? Either way, the system stops you from just immediately grabbing a full army of 100 Pikmin in the early game and zerging everything down from the word go. Though enemies also feel weaker than ever, so we'll see how this balances out. But I like it in theory that you can't just throw out an army at every problem and come out alright. Every individual Pikmin in your team matters several times more than before. You have to earn your army. This is also a game that is, uh, a bit talkative. I do like a lot of the dialogue they have for pure personality building, something I was worried I'd dislike, but that's not the issue. Day one of Pikmin 4 took me around 24 minutes of play from first gaining control to obtaining the third treasure. I'd say only a fourth of that was actual gameplay. Because of the previously mentioned future explosion of items and upgrades and... Well, they need to tutorialize you on all of it. And also just the basic controls too. They need to mention their options and something important to play with. But the first two or three days of gameplay will be to walk forward 10 feet, do a bunch of dialogue, walk five more, get another scene, do a little bit, get a tutorial. It breaks the pacing so much, and I really hope that it's not something that comes up in the full game. Once I got into day three fully, it seemed to stop, well, stopping me. Only when I made a discovery like a new Pikmin type or a function of them did it stop me at all to show me what was going on. That's been one of the other strengths of Pikmin, I feel. Gameplay sections are short but consistently going, with the after mission report being where any and all story will take place. It's time to decompress and look back on events, a break from the constant multitasking and any danger. Maybe go read descriptions of all the treasure you found. Some of them are clever, others hilarious. The writing always just a fun time. It's a break on your terms. There's also story stuff that I won't get too deep into, but longtime Pikmin players will probably start off very confused. I thought they were retconning a lot of stuff, but it might just be a further expansion. I do hope that this story is a continuation and won't be a retread. Pikmin 3 did cement a clear narrative through line. Pikmin 4 seems it might be, but the demo doesn't give enough to be sure. Finally, this is the only Pikmin game with character creation. It is neat in its own way, and I like the options you have, but like, it will be hard to get attached to my character when you're just some random schmuck who never talks and doesn't seem to really have a personality. This isn't Link. Every character in Pikmin has a lot of development and personality, even the least developed being the president of Hokutate Freight. A customized character is cute, but lacks any real pull to me. Again, feeling like something just added for the hell of it. And this is all a lot for a demo. It sounds like mostly criticism, but that's because the things I like? It's Pikmin. It's more Pikmin. Like I said, I really want to play more Pikmin. Pikmin has always been a solid experience. It's just pure, enjoyable fun. The exploration is still solid, multitasking is great once you have go here, and I do actually like some of the additional progression tracks they added, like the onion. I always have faith in Pikmin, and this demo barely scratches the surface, pun not intended. Then there's the brand new night exploration, all the other zones, perhaps more captains than just you and Ochi. It's just an enjoyable, fun experience. If you like what you see, go give it a try, and if you like it, grab Pikmin 3 Deluxe, and maybe the Pikmin 1 plus 2 collection. They're all good games, but Pikmin 3 is just so amazing. Please, play Pikmin. It's good. It's such a lovely game. I waited like 10 years of it being quote-unquote done for it to finally come out. And I want everyone to love Pikmin and Ochi. Oh, and Ghost Trick. Go play Ghost Trick. Do it for Missile. He's even better than Ochi. I hope people enjoyed this, and I hope if you ever switch, you'll go play Pikmin 4's demo. And then maybe go grab the Pikmin games. They're so fun, and I love them, and just... Gosh. Pikmin. It truly is just such a lovely series. I'll always believe in it, for sure. And it looks better than ever. The game is beautiful. Take care, and may the power of Anadid Hogs lay waste to your enemies.
extra special thanks to all my patrons over on Patreon, with an extra, extra special thanks in order to go play Pikmin 4 to... Ayman al Khatib, Benjamin Han, Benjamin Rice, Bergie, Karsten Wayward, Ethan W, Fraser97, Jeremy Abbott, Jericho, Kevin Lowe, Mizella, Shana, Shimmering Blaze, T Rogue, Timmy, and Zero Two. Thank you all for watching. See you next time.